This lesson deals with supplemental problem 12.5. You can find this problem in the ECE 202 ebook in the chapter 12, Supplemental Problems, starting on page 17. An RC active filter is a filter consisting of only resistors, capacitors, and controlled sources. These filters don't need inductors to create complex conjugate poles. We'll later see in chapter 15 that inductors can magnetically couple signals from nearby inductors, and this can cause all kinds of problems with noise and interference. RC active filters can also provide voltage gain. Given this circuit, which has an op amp, three resistors, and two capacitors, can you solve for V out over V in using the op amp circuit analysis techniques that we looked at in chapter four of ECE 201? Next, what type of filter function is this RC filter providing? Then solve for H naught, omega naught, and Q naught. Lastly, do a piecewise simulation and plot the magnitude of V out over V in versus frequency, then draw the asymptotes on this plot. In chapter four of ECE 201, the technique we learned for op -amp circuit analysis was to determine the number of unknown node voltages. In this case, I have one, two, three, four nodes. But of those four node voltages, I actually know two. Node voltage three is our input, Vn, although we're showing it symbolically, it is considered to be known. And with the op -amp, when I have feedback around it, the voltage across the input terminals is driven to zero, so I actually know node voltage two. So I need to write two equations for the two unknowns. I want to do that at nodes that don't have a voltage source connected to it, because at this node, the current in this voltage source is another unknown. And likewise over here at node four, the current in the voltage controlled voltage source is also another unknown. I let all the currents leave node one, and I'm gonna set that equal to zero. Current flowing in R1 is gonna be node voltage one minus node voltage three, but node voltage three is Vn, divided by R1 or times G1. The current in R2 is just gonna be node voltage one divided by R2 or times G2. The current in the capacitor is node voltage one minus node voltage four, which is V out, divided by one over SC2, and that's this term right over here. The current in this capacitor is V1 minus V2, but V2 is equal to zero, divided by one over SC1, or just times SC1. Put Vn times G1 on the other side of the equation as a plus V and G1, and then I have V1 times G1, V1 times G2, V1 times SC1, and V1 times SC2, and then a minus V out times SC2. One equation and two unknowns, V1, and V out. My second node, I also let the currents leave the node, although I got this one entering. This current that's entering is gonna be V1 minus zero times SC1, and then the current that's leaving is zero, and then the current leaving here is gonna be V2 minus V4, but V4 is V out, divided by R3. And that's this equation right over here. So I can also solve for V1. V1 is gonna be equal to minus V out times G3 divided by SC1. I could go back and substitute that in right over here. Let's do that. Vn G1 is gonna be equal to minus V out times G3 over SC1 times this quantity, which is G1 plus G2 plus SC1 plus SC2. I also have a minus V out, bring that out in front here, times SC2. I can solve for V out over Vn. V out is here, I'm gonna bring V in here, I'm gonna take the reciprocal of this, I'll put it in the denominator, and the numerator I've got at G1 and then a minus sign. Let's multiply the numerator and denominator by SC1, so I get a minus SC1 G1, that cancels with this term. So I get G3 times G1 plus G2, that's this term. And then I have G3 times the quantity C1 plus C2 times S. And lastly, multiplying SC1 times SC2, I get S squared C1 C2. Now let's divide through by C1 C2. They have a one for coefficient, dividing by C1 C2, and then dividing by C1 C2. And then in the numerator, C1s cancel, and I have just minus S G1 divided by C2. Next, let's replace G1 by one over R1, G3 by one over R3, Likewise, one over R3 here. And this term G1 plus G2 is the parallel combination of R1 and R2. So I could write that as one over R1 in parallel with R2. R1 was 13K and C2 was 0.2 microfarads and C1 was also 0.2 microfarads. R3 is 100K. We have C1 times C2 is 0.2 microfarads squared. And then R1 in parallel with R2 are two 13K resistors in parallel, so their value is half. To multiplying that out, I get a minus 384.6S divided by S squared plus 100S plus 38.46K. Now, is that the form of a bandpass filter, which is H naught omega naught over Q naught S divided by S squared plus omega naught over QS plus omega naught squared? And the answer is yes. We can solve for those three constants, H naught, omega naught, and Q naught. This is the term omega naught squared, so I'll take the square root of that and then divide by two pi and you get 31.21 hertz. This term has got Q naught in it, so I'll take the reciprocal of it, so that's one over 100, multiply it by omega naught, and I'll get the value then of Q naught, it's about two. And lastly, in the numerator, I have H naught omega naught over Q naught, and that's equal to a minus 384.6, and then multiplying that by 
Q naught over omega naught, I can then get the value of H naught. So multiplying that by one over 100, I get a minus 3.846. Next, let's form a spice file. So I've got a title, got a dot end. I've got my input voltage source and my components. I'll let you look back at the schematic. My voltage control voltage source, which is how I'm going to model the op-amp. The op-amp's output is at node 4 to ground, plus terminal, minus terminal. And then we're sensing from the plus terminal, which is grounded, to the minus terminal, which is node 2. I'll give that a gain of 100 million. Not infinity, but a pretty large value. I'm going to sketch this from 1 hertz to 1 kilohertz. And I'm taking a look at 10, 100, 1,000. So I've got three decades. I'll do 300 points with 100 points per decade. The output shown on the following page. Since my input voltage is one volt, then my node voltage has become the transfer function. So plotting the node voltage number four in dB, I get my Bode plot of the transfer function, which is this solid curve. If you take 20 log of the magnitude of H naught, which is minus 3.846, you get 11.7 dB. I also drew the Bode approximations on top of my actual curve. And that has a slope of 20 dB per decade and minus 20 dB per decade. And they cross at F naught, which is 31.21 hertz, which I found from the peak. And the value that it crosses at is the ratio of H naught to Q naught. And I calculated that from the numbers on the last page of a ratio of 3.846 to 1.961. And that was 5.85 in dB. I also sketched the phase angle of the transfer function. And you can see here at low frequencies, we approach minus 90 degrees at high frequencies of minus 270, and at the center frequency, we have a phase angle of a minus 180 degrees. Just like our inductive circuits, we saw that the results became purely real at the center frequency. This particular circuit is one of 10 circuits that we're gonna take a look at in ECE 402 to make a room equalizer. And this is supplemental problem 12.5.